Crypto presents exciting new opportunities for the investment-minded, but it's also volatile and accelerating in complexity. That's why we created Token Metrics, an intelligent crypto platform backed by an industry-leading combination of data, AI, and media that feeds optimized portfolios to crypto investors. Featuring Token Metrics ratings to help you find the best investment opportunities in real time, an indices page that showcases various model portfolios and deep insights into price predictions and technical analysis, a dedicated NFT dashboard that evaluates NFT collections and assets by our machine learning algorithm to find the most profitable and secure NFTs across all available blockchains. Plus, with access to Token Metrics TV, monitor 24-7 exclusive crypto news and analysis. Whether you're a first-time trader or a seasoned crypto investor, you can stay informed and in control, backed by your all-in-one crypto companion, Token Metrics. Take control. All right, all right. Happy Friday. Hello, crypto family. Hello, Token Metrics family. I'm Ian Bellina. Welcome to, to, to Token Metrics Live. We have the pleasure of being joined by Rob from uh, Digital, Digital Asset News. Rob, how's it going? Great. It's nice and warm over here in Puerto Rico. Sorry to hear that you're in the freezing tundra that is Austin, Texas. <laughs> yeah, actually, surprisingly, it is pretty cold here today. Uh, pretty cold. It's 56 <laughs> degrees. But uh, great to have you. Uh, Rob's part of the TM family, great friend of ours. Uh, also has some news to share with us today. Uh, but great to have him here on his live stream. Welcome to the crypto family. Um, as usual, you can catch us on social. Uh, find us on YouTube, obviously, Tokometrics. And as we like to say, be sure to tell a friend not being in crypto is a financial crime. Yes, even in a time like this, <laughs> the market is down, but crypto is the future of money, open finance, especially after all the, everything was seen with the collapse of FTX and other centralized entities, crypto is really giving power back to the people, right? Not your keys, not your crypto. So definitely make sure people are protecting their wealth. Uh, also catch us on Twitter, Tokenmetrics Inc. Uh, uh, Grog, could you pull up my, my screen? On IG, Facebook, and we also have a podcast. Did you know we had a podcast? Surprisingly, I was going through our data. We had almost 900,000 downloads last year on the podcast. So if you want to listen to us on the go, get your crypto news on the go, be sure to catch us at tokenmetrics.com slash podcast. So the title for today's stream is, we'll cover AI and liquid staking tokens. For those of you who are customers, you know, these have been two big narratives we've covered in the last two weeks. And they've been doing very, very well. They've been it's basically been all green almost in the last two weeks. We'll cover that. We'll cover the launch of our data API. We're making our signals and data available to developers and traders who want to build their own trading bots. So that, that launched yesterday. And then we also have an, a, a, pro, a project to cover and a giveaway in terms of walk to earn. So if you want to get your 10,000 steps in, make sure you're earning some tokens, we'll cover that as well. All right. So Rob, how about we start with just kind of giving people an overview on yourself. Ah, sure. Uh, my name is Rob and uh, I'm the host of Digital Asset News uh, YouTube channel. And you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and all those usual places. But uh, we started the channel in late 2019, going into 2020 for the uh, Bitcoin halving. And the reason I got into it was because I felt, uh, first of all, I was bugging my family and friends too much. So I decided to do my own, <laughs> my own channel. And then we just started to talk about it, and then things kind of ballooned from there. So I've been in crypto since uh, 2017, when I invested a very large amount of my uh, <laughs> of my uh, holdings of, of my of my cash equivalents because I thought I was a genius investor, and uh, I invested a ton of money, way more than I should have. And then 2018, I saw my my portfolio decrease by over 95 percent because I was in a bunch of crazy altcoins and even Bitcoin, you know, fell down 85% from top to bottom in 2017, 2018. So um, I just uh, went along that continuum and just tried to figure out what I did wrong, which there was many things. And of course, I'm not perfect now, but the show that we do is just talking about the happenings that are happening that are going on in the, in the space right now, but also to give people just a little bit of insights of uh, my screw ups and things to not do. So like Warren Buffett says, you have to learn from mistakes. It's not to be your mistakes. So that's the show in a nutshell. Well said, well said. Definitely encourage everybody to go check out the channel on YouTube. Highly re recommend it. So if you have questions for us for the AMA, just go to menti.com or just scan this QR code. That's M-E-N-T-I.com. 
The code is 5598-3445. All right, so with that being said, going into the agenda, let's actually go through audience welcome uh, real quick. First person on the stream was Motivation. Welcome, great to have you on board. Um, okay, you're saying found a hidden gem thanks to tokenmetrics. That's great news, always great to hear that. Uh, hey, Preet, welcome, how, how are you? Flip Burger, welcome, Crypto Lion. <laughs> Crypto Funds says, Rob, thanks for the sweat coin follow. All right. And then Satoshi Nakamoto has blessed us oh, with his presence. Says, he's here. happy anniversary, everybody. Uh, RIP Harold Finney, hold the keys to your coin, not your keys, not your coin. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And definitely help us out by uh, giving this a like and sharing this video with any friends who are curious about crypto, who want to kind of understand what's happening with crypto. Uh, with that being said, let's move on to the crypto market update. So we'll basically go through our, th actually apologies, uh, we're actually gonna talk about the data API first. Uh, so quick announcement to kind of get this out of the way. So this has been something lots of people have been asking for. We have lots of data on our platform at Tokenmetrics and people have been asking for, can we build trading bots with this data? Can we make our data available to developers who want to leverage this? And we're excited to say that, yes, this is now possible. So if you just go to api.tokenmetrics.com, uh, it will basically take you to this page where we're going through and making our grades, our indicators, and our analytics available right now for this beta launch for free. Now, there are rate limits, but if you want to build your own trading bots or do whatever you want with our data, it is available, right? So I highly encourage you guys to check this out. This will let you really hmm. experiment and see what you can develop with this. We had one of our quant analysts build a trading bot using the TM indicators and correlation. Uh, that's been working pretty well for him. So we just kind of want to launch this. Uh, these are the data points available. We have our trader grade, investor grades available, including fundamentals, valuation, on-chain technologies, all these, all these different grades. So imagine the flexibility you can do if you want to build a trading bot or if you want to do whatever you want to do with our data. Because as we know, data is becoming the fuel for the, for the next generation of, of uh, te technology. So we'll drop this. Uh, and the bottom of the video for you, for you to check out. Uh, this is the documentation. You can go here and see all the different data points and endpoints we have available, uh, including price prediction, grades, sentiment. So very, very excited for the launch of this. And as usual, we're always open to feedback. All right, so Ooh. with that, go ahead, Rob. Ian, Anything you want to add? Ian, to real that? quick. Here's a, yeah, here's a question for you. Would, is there a way for us to integrate integrate some of that data that you have right there into our website over at Dan Teaches Crypto? I mean, uh, not like everything. We want to steal yes, everything yeah. from you. Unless you let us, then yeah. of course we will. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, so basically we have all these different endpoints available. Um, mm -hmm. So people can pull in this data. So I know, for instance, some people want to take our signals and indicators and grades and build a, disc a, a bot in Discord or Telegram. Right? That's basically right, sends right, them right. alerts or signals. So... Pretty much, we're giving we're creating a platform where anybody can leverage this data in any manner they, they want to consume it. So mm. that would be possible. That's pretty good. Yeah, because we'll just, I mean, the website's, our website's free. Dan teaches crypto. But if we can do that for like price prediction stuff, I think that would, I mean, of course, people have to do their own research. They have to really, you know, yeah. really dig into it. But I think that would be good. That would be great. So we'll talk afterwards. All right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So... Um, also, a quick, quick announcement from Dan. Let's talk about Dan Teaches Crypto and the giveaway you're doing. So, yeah, so... Um, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, there's, uh, a, yeah, there's the start website. Start the so, thank you, Ian. So what we did is, is we... First of all, I have to tell everybody right now that I'm super biased on the things I talk about. The things that I talk about are the things that I own. So don't be disillusioned by saying, oh, Rob must, must be just a super nice guy to talk about this project. No, no, Rob owns this project, which is Sweat, sweat Coins. But they have a great free app. It's free to download. You can earn free Sweat Coins or free Sweat Tokens, whatnot. And of course, people will say, well, nothing's free. And you're absolutely right. So when you get into the app itself, you're going to see ads, just like you're watching this on YouTube. You probably saw some pretty junky ads. Over there in Sweatcoin and Sweat App, you're going to see some ads for sneakers or for some kind of workout devices. That's just how it goes. But what we did is we said, look, it's the New Year's, New Year's resolution. Let's get people up and walking. You don't have to do hit training or stuff like that. Just do something. So what we did is said, okay, download this app. You can find this on the website. 
walk as much as you possibly can in 30 days. And then at the end of the month, which is this month, we're going to give away a bunch of free stuff. Ian, scroll down a little bit more into the black mm -hmm. section there. Prizes. So the first place, as you may notice, you're going to give, did we say 1,000? Yeah, 1,000 sweat coins, one, one uh, Ledger Nano X, the good one, the one that actually can store a bunch of different apps on it or different tokens, uh, a lifetime membership to token metrics, a premium membership to Coin Ledger so you can do your taxes because everybody's afraid of that. Also, a premium membership to Tencent for their next uh, drop of whatever they're uh, looking to do, like a launch pad. And then also a stone book or uh, what we call uh, the ability to save your mnemonic phrases in a book that's tear proof, waterproof, and smudge proof. So that's just first place. And then second place, it goes down from there. Yeah. Second place, scroll down a little bit, Ian, 500 coin ledger. You're going to get some free art. Premium membership into into the Cryptoverse, Ben's website, Coin Ledger, and then Arculus, uh, which is one that looks like a little metal device right there. Third place, same type of thing, just a little bit less tokens, more art, Coin Ledger, and the Cryptoverse, blah blah blah, and keep going down because we're gonna go all the way to thirty. So just keep scrolling, and I'll just say what's different, Ian. Oh Fourth wow! Place, Fifty, two hundred, <laughs> fifth place, ladies NFT. Yes, because I didn't want people to feel left out, and that was the big thing. You get some free swag. Also, meld tokens, thousands. Uh, no, no, I think 5,000 sweat tokens. And then the NFT for banker. Same thing, random drawing 21 through 30. Very simple, right? And then mm -hmm. uh, what we do is we do an update every three days or so. And you can see the leaderboard. You can click right there to see who it is. Right now, there's some people crushing it. Don't be discouraged because down in like the 20 areas, I mean, I think if you can, if you can walk a couple miles, you'd be okay. And then keep going down. And then if you are if you don't see your name on the list, you can always click there and manually add yourself to the competition. And uh, that's pretty much it. So that's what we did. It's just to get right, people. Awesome. To, I like yeah, that. get out there and walk. Right. That's it. And there no, I am. Actually, I've head. been walking every day. Okay. I've been walking or running. <laughs> actually, I've been walking and running every day because I think health is wealth, right? Uh, for those of you who've kind of been following me in crypto. Uh, I've lost over 50 pounds in the last one year, All right? So yeah, health you know, has I, been something I've prioritized in the last one year. Yeah, you've lost, because I, I remember watching you back in the day. You were a chubby guy. Yeah, yes, I like, was, like, you know. You were uh, like, you know, yeah. now. I was, I was feasting a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, I would say for me, it's been the Aura Ring and my Apple Watch, just making sure I hit my steps every day, just being active, at least 45 minutes of activity, whether it's working out, Right now I work like about five days a week running, but also adding in walks has been pretty crucial. So I like that people can earn tokens for walking, right? Because if you're going to walk, might as well earn some tokens at it, right? Yeah, and and keep yourself wealthy. I mean healthy, because I mean if you yeah. if the people are watching now, if you get super wealthy, let's say you hit it big and you're you make your millions, right? But then all of a sudden you get diabetes or renal failure or heart attacks. What does it do for you? So um, healthy people have a thousand exactly. wishes, but a sick person only has one. So make sure you stay healthy. Walk around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely excited to partner with you to give away the lifetime token metrics membership. So if you're out there and you haven't joined token metrics yet, here's your chance to get a lifetime access by just walking. All right. So with that being said, uh, thank you for that, Rob. Let's thank move you. on to... Our predictions for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and altcoins. Um, Rob, what's kind of your take on the market this month? So, so everybody, we all have seen the news. We've all seen the reports. And we know that 2023 is going to be a very bumpy year. It sh hopefully will be better than 2022, but it's going to be bumpy this year. We don't know what's going to happen when the Fed comes out. Are they going to pause? Uh, the rate hikes? Are they going to go 25 basis points? Are they going to go 50 basis points? Is the war in Ukraine going to get over? Are we going to see a record high inflation in the UK, even though inflation is coming down here in the United States? So for this year, I would just say that for what I see for the market, it's just going to be just like what we've seen. In the last three or four days, we've seen a rocket. Uh, you know, Bitcoin goes up. Well, first, it started with Avalanche, right? Avalanche, they came in because they were picked up by Amazon official partnership. So that started to take off. Then the rest of the crypto market started to take off because the CPI numbers came into as expected. So everything starts to take off. Now people are starting to say, oh, well, guess what? This is the next bull run. 
this is not the, I don't think this is the next bull run. I, I, I don't think it is. I think we've got uh, a little bit more lower lows to put in uh, before we can actually hit some higher highs. Me personally, I don't know what the contagion is going to be like for the different, like the Grayscale Bitcoin Trusts, Genesis, and them, and they're potentially going to Chapter 11. And also, the SEC just uh, laid out a, a lawsuit against Genesis and uh, Gemini. So for me, the macro factors don't support a massive bull run coming in. Call me crazy, but I could be wrong. So this year, that's why I try to take a look at uh, things like this, some AI generated data to where I can say, where do I think things are going? Well, I can compare the things that I know with some stuff that, of course, I don't know, which is a lot because I'm not that super, mm -hmm. not smart. So I need stuff like this. So for me, I would just say people be, be ca uh, cautiously optimistic, hope for the best, but expect the worst. I like that phrase, cautiously optimistic. Uh, well said, well said. So I'll kind of share my take, which I, which I covered in the last few weeks with our customers on our webinar. But while the market is still bearish, we have slowly been trending up, right? We've been, we had basically green weeks the last few weeks, especially in particular sectors with particular na narratives and coins. So our bull and bear indicator was basically at 10 or lower, but it's been slowly rising up, which is a good mm -hmm. sign. And good especially time. if we look at our breakout strategy, it's almost 70% of the tokens are green. They're basically breaking mm -hmm. out. So meaning that not long-term, but in the short term, we've kind of hit almost maybe a mini bottom, which is good because below, because before this was under 20%. So to me, this is a positive sign. And if we go to our Bitcoin altcoin season indicator, if we notice here, it slowly went up. Right now it's kind of crept back down, which, which, which isn't good, but we were slowly trending back up towards entering the swipe space. And the other thing that really kind of stands out in the overall mm -hmm. market is looking at the sector analysis. So for those of you who watched a li live stream for what, I think cr Christmas, all these sectors, the highest team grade was in the 50s. But now we have L1s overall, averaging about an 83% TM grade. So that sector has been trending upwards. Then we have yield farming, exchange tokens, and DeFi. So seeing all these three sectors being uh, over 70% is pretty good. And then going down here, we basically can look at it and see if there are any big market movers in terms of deviation. So I'm seeing Voyager. Uh, there was news today that, or I think this week, that Voyager being purchased by Binance was approved. So I think that's why that's moving. We have yeah. surprisingly Bitcoin Avalanche Bridge. <laughs> so speaking of Avalanche, looks like people, look, 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 looks like Bitcoin Maxis maybe are trying to bridge over to Avalanche. <laughs> we have mm -hmm. Centrifuge uh, and some other tokens over here. So that's kind of what I see with the market. Speaking of, of Avalanche, it's up 16%. Now, so sure. Amazon News was pretty big. Um, then if we go to just the overall ratings, I'll show you how I'm viewing the market right now. So one of the reasons why we made this platform is to be, be able to give you a high level view in terms of where to focus your attention in the crypto space. So not everybody has time to go through and look at a thousand coins in real time. But the cool <laughs> thing about this is we can come here and just really set our filters. So in this case, let's say we're looking for trading opportunities. We would just, set, just add a filter for looking just purely at bullish tokens. Uh, and let's say, um, let me actually add a trading volume requirement here real quick. So let's only look at tokens that have 5 million or more daily trading volume in the last 24 hours. Hmm. Then we'll kind of filter out some very low caps. And look at the tokens we have here, right? Pax Gold has always been highly rated in a market like this. People are looking for it as really a store of value. And it hasn't hmm. really lost value in the last one year. Then we have Fetch.ai, which is trending um, due to the whole AI narrative. Uh, for those who don't know, basically Microsoft uh, announced an investment of $10 billion into OpenAI, the creator of ChatGPT3, at a $29 billion valuation this week. That's pretty crazy. Now, when this happened, pretty much the whole AI narrative began trending. Almost every AI token began pumping. So if we look at Fetch.ai, um, and we also had some other AI companies here. Uh, I think Phoenix was also one. But basically, the AI narrative has been a trending sector. Uh, so if I can actually maybe even find this here. Hmm. 
Uh, actually, maybe uh, here, just give me one second. It'll be easier to cover this here. So if we just put in artificial intelligence, this is why I'm not really a proponent uh, of looking at the macro. Uh, it, sometimes people think that's kind of crazy, but I'm more of a value investor and I feel like there's a bull market everywhere. And if you're always focused on the macro, you miss the alpha, even in a, in a bear market, right? So looking at all these AI tokens, we have, if we sort by FDV, Singularity, Fetch.ai, Artificial Liquid Intelligence, Numerai, all these tokens have done pretty well, right? In the last one week, up 240%. Fetch.ai, 124%, 147%. So this sector has, has been trending upwards a lot. And same thing with liquid staking tokens. For those of you who have been following the Ethereum Shanghai fork upgrade is coming up. Uh, basically, this has been trending upwards as well. Uh, this, we, we covered this about two weeks ago. Uh, basically, actually, sorry, this is the, the wrong one. Let me, one governance tokens. All right, there we go. All right, so looking at this by FDV. Uh, so LDO, Lido Dao, which we covered two weeks ago, of 50%, 31%, 24%. The returns are kind of now coming back down. So I think people are in profits. But mm -hmm. I think if you just follow the big narrative each week, you can still make alpha and make some money uh, trading the market, even in a time like this. And the one way I kind of find that is through the platform, looking at, at the trader grade and then zooming out and seeing what's the common theme. That's how we basically caught the AI narrative because we noticed there are lots of AI tokens here. And the week prior, we caught the whole liquid staking derivative narrative based on finding those similar tokens um, having a high trader grade and having uh, bullish signals. So all in all, in terms of my predictions for the market, um, I think as Rob said, be cautiously optimistic, but still be in the market, still look, look for opportunities to snipe the market in terms of trading opportunities. And then long-term investing, I do feel like there are some tokens that have began to potentially bottom and you can start accumulating that, right? So the ones we covered in the past were Scylla Network. Uh, we also covered uh, Cartesi, uh, Solana, surprisingly. Uh, we, we've turned bullish on that. Um, I think the trader grid, uh, sorry, the investor grid has been pretty high. Uh, I think with all the FUD of Utes and DGOD, basically the big NFT products leaving their ecosystem and the TVL being down a lot and all the FUD, basically when there's blood in the streets, that's the best time we think to accumulate because you're buying from a first seller, people who want to get out and you'll get the biggest discount available. So with Solana being down 95% um, a few weeks ago, and now it's, it's basically been trending up. I think that's, that's pretty good. All right. So let us know what you think uh, down below. Uh, what are your predictions for the crypto market in terms of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and altcoins? All right. So speaking of that, we kind of touched on some of these tokens, but tell us what you think. What is your coin of the month? So we've kind of covered the two narratives, liquid staking, the derivatives, and AI tokens. What do you think is the coin of the month? Which one are you most bullish on? Obviously not financial advice, but definitely curious to see what the community thinks. Uh, so the options we have are Lido DAO, Rocket Pool, Singularity, Ocean Protocol, and Fetch.ai. Uh, Rob, any thoughts on any of these tokens? Risky. Lido, well, Lido Dow, maybe not, maybe not so much, but all this stuff is risky. And it's because, and you're right, Ian, there's, there's a, there's a bull run somewhere, right? Even, even if you take a look back, back in like, uh, there, there's this narrative about 10 year bear markets and they, they took data from the S and P 500 from 1965 to 1976, 1977. And they took a look at just to hit its all time high again, it took over a decade essentially. But if you really zoom into it, uh, you can see that there's there was peaks and valleys. There was bull markets there, and people could make money. So maybe that's just what's going on here. Not saying there's a ten year bear market, but for these things, like you can make it. But that's not my that's not my my play uh, particularly, especially like this, because the narrative could go up, and we could keep hearing about Microsoft. Okay, maybe they go for ten billion. Maybe like you know what, we're gonna offer you more, twelve billion dollars. So what's gonna happen? Well, everything that has to do with AI is gonna go up. But let's just say, mm -hmm. now here's another, another part. Let's just say something falls through on, on this narrative. Then all of a sudden you're like, oof, and then, then the, the, the prices start to go down. So for me on my channel, I talk about taking profits. If you're up 
20, 30%, this is not financial advice, but maybe it's an idea to start thinking about taking profits along the way. So you have some dry powder later. But to me, those things are risky and I don't really do too much of those. Yeah, uh, well said, well said, Rob. All right, so let me just kind of cover some of these tokens here. So let's say I wanted to potentially invest or trade this. What would I like? So surprisingly here, uh, both fetch.ai and Singularity mm -hmm. Um, do have a TM investor grade over 80%, right? This is our new long-term mm -hmm. investor grade. Um, so the way I view this is I would add these two tokens to a watch list and do further research or just do your own research and do your own due mm -hmm. diligence, which includes looking into the community, the ecosystem. But the reason is why out of, let's say you, you're saying, I want, I want some exposure in my portfolio to the AI trend for the future, for the next market cycle. What tokens would I look at? Um, based on our data, these are the two Anything over 80%, we're pretty bullish on in terms of adding to our watch list. So let me actually kind of just delve deeper into why these two are worth looking at based on, on token metrics. So let's begin with fetch.ai. So switching to investor grade, we come down here. Besides having pretty good returns in the last one month, we notice it has good fundamentals, good valuation, meaning that it's is undervalued relative to the sector it's in um, and has an okay technology grade, decent technology grade. Uh, specifically, mm -hmm. if we go to the fundamentals here, we basically look at this as, okay, there's lots of activity in terms of web traffic and wallet activity and on-chain data. You know, good list of investors, tokenomics are good, team, community. Uh, exchange listings are not the best, um, but everything else seems pretty, pretty good. Let's actually pull up their website real quick and just kind of showcase what, what they're about. So they're powering peer-to-peer -peer applications with automation and AI. Uh, basically, they're providing a platform and ecosystem for building AI applications. Hmm. And the thing that was kind of interesting that jumped out to me is they're building using the Cosmos SDK and Cosmos ah. Mosm. And in the past, mm -hmm. we've mentioned that we're very bullish on the Cosmo ecosystem for the next market cycle, uh, especially yeah. with the narrative around app chains, applications with uh, specific side chains or blockchains. Because uh, I think we're entering this multi-chain world where we're scaling now up, right, from either that perspective, whether L2s, even L3s, or even just modular blockchains and application chains. So I think that's one big narrative to look at for the next market cycle. And if people are looking for maybe an a specific application chain just for AI, uh, this could potentially be one to look mm -hmm. into. Obviously, it is super risky. Altcoins are super risky, uh, but definitely worth keeping an, an eye on. I think this could be worth putting on a watch list. The other was Singularity.net. Also has a decent or, or a rather good TM investor grade. And mm -hmm. if we go down here, good fundamentals, also undervalued. Technology grade mm -hmm. is actually even better. So if we go to the technology section here, we can see that it has lots of development activity, which is always good. And uh, security and audit could be better. Uh, we've, we've partnered with Sir.Live to basically get their security audits, bug bounties, hacks. So if a project gets hacked, all this will be part of the technology grade. Uh, but that's also pretty interesting. Uh, now, the thing that kind of jumps out to me is their FTV, FTV is 315 million. Uh, if we go to fetch.ai, 270 million. So they're both about 300 million FTV. And the question I always like to ask myself is if I'm investing in the long term for the next market cycle, does this have the potential to do a 10x return? So mm -hmm. that's something to wonder. So let's say the FTV does a 10x return. Let's say next market cycle is two to four years. To me, I think that's possible, especially with the projected growth of the AI space. Um, if I actually pull up um, this website I had, uh, I had AI, I think it was AI total, total addressable market uh, projections. Kind of gives you an idea, idea of where this could potentially go. So the site I used for this was Yeah, so let's look at the global AI software market size projected from now till 2025. So in 2022, it's basically at about 50 billion. 2025, 
it's about 126 billion. So let's, it's basically about a, about a 3x. And I feel like this is for equities and just regular markets. Crypto, I feel like 10x is possible, but let's say as a safe bet, maybe as the baseline, we're looking at a, 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 a 3x. So if we go back here, uh, that's not what I want. Um, so let's say, for instance, we go to our scenario analysis and we look at the current dominance of Fetch.ai versus the total crypto market cap. So it's basically at 0.02%. So somewhere around here at 24 cents. So somewhere around here. So let's project that the total crypto market cap goes to 10 trillion as projected by mm -hmm. the World Economic Forum by 2027, right? Um, if this project does well, where could this potentially go? So basically we're looking at about $2.23 if it maintains the current dominance it has now, which could be possible, which could also not be possible because crypto does get bigger and bigger and dominance typically shrinks. For example, look at Bitcoin dominance. But this is basically about a 10x return if it maintains its dominance and crypto goes to 10 trillion. You do have to factor in the inflation of the FDV and new tokens hitting the supply. But that's kind of the thought process I have as I'm building a portfolio for the long term, especially when you're looking at altcoins. Uh, let me just pause here and see, Rob, any thoughts on all this? No, it was, uh, sorry, I was actually, I was sidestepping when he, when he said that, that comment about uh, the World Economic Forum in 2027 saying it will be $10 trillion. I was just uh, taking a look here. And there was a, there was a survey released in, in 2015 as well from the, from the WF and said that mm -hmm. uh, distributed technology or blockchain will be mainstream in 12 years. So even back then they were, they were on top of things. But I, but I, I think it's, it is interesting about what you said about, you know, like for all the artificial intelligence, I think the bigger question would be like, how does, because I mean, there's, there's, there's great scores there uh, for Singularity and Fetch AI. But the question I think I'd have is like, well, you know, who, who is the team behind that whole project? Like if, if I was going to go in for like long term, like I would just take a look at how mm -hmm. big is the community? What's the utility? What does it do? Who's actually using it right now? What is the team? What have they done? And how far are they going? And then, of course, the tokenomics, see how things are going. But I mean, it could conceivably do those things, especially with I don't think the narrative is going to slow down anytime soon with AI. I think things will just speed up from here. So perhaps. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're biased, but we're very bullish on AI as a narrative, <laughs> hence us <laughs> a data and AI company. But yeah, yeah, I think as Rob mentioned, right, I would definitely use this as a way to kind of figure out what areas you want to research more into. For example, if you're curious about the team, you can, this says, this is a pretty good team. You would then just delve deeper into the team on the website, the community, right. and all of that. Um, so let's say you actually wanted to trade this. Maybe you're not so bullish in the long term, especially in the crypto market. Uh, looking at our trading signals, our trends, visual trends indicator turned bullish on this back on January 8th. Um, and specifically, it's trading on Binance and KuCoin. And mm -hmm. I would go to our support levels and resistance levels and just kind of see, okay, where can this go, right? Is there still more juice yeah. in this or is this done, right? So currently it's at 15 cents. Now, looking at this, I'm seeing we have support. So let's say you wanted to trade this and put a stop loss. I would use, we have 12 cents and 9 cents. All right. So basically, hmm. this could decrease about, about 6 cents below. Right. Now, typically when you trade, you want to have a risk to reward ratio of 3x or higher, ideally. All right. So if this is going to go down 6 cents, you want this to go up 18 cents or more in terms of your target for take, taking profits. So that gives us basically this has to go over 30 cents from 15 cents. I would basically be looking at about 33 cents as a take profit. So the question is, do you think this could go that high? I mean, as you see here, this has, <laughs> has basically pumped. All right. So that's if you're going to trade it, that that's what I would do. Obviously when you trade, you always want to have your take profits already set. And also your stop loss is already set. That way you basically minimize risk, right? So that's the way I would use it. I, I feel like this is a part of the platform that's very underused by our customers. So kind of want to showcase mm -hmm. how you could use this to trade any token, right? You, you just come here, find the, the levels. We are working on making this a lot easier. We're just putting everything here as numbers. So you just can kind of come here, 
find your next stop losses, your next take profits. All right, so with that being said, back to the poll. So coin of the month, based on the audience vote, the winner is Singularity. All right, well, that, that, that is the winner for coin of the month, followed by Fetch.ai and then Lido Dow. So tell us what you think. Do you think the audience is wrong? Do you think there's a different token not mentioned here? Let us know below, uh, down in the comments. All right, so let's now move on to question of the day. Uh, are you bullish in Avalanche? The options are yes, no, I'm not sure. Uh, Rob, huh. what 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 do you think about Avalanche? Are you bullish? I think in the that's it's a weird thing because like I mean we we just talked about the different tokens. The one that was built on on Cosmos was it Singularity or was it Fetch AI? I forgot which one you said. But I mean, layer one solution. Fetch, 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 AI. Fetch AI. Fetch AI. Like it's using Fetch Cosmos. AI. Okay. Yeah. And if, if you think about it, like layer one solutions are, I mean, if you don't know, if you don't want to go down that rabbit hole about like which one's going to be the next big thing, we'll just take a look at what's being built on, on these different chains. And like with, with Amazon picking up the first official partnership with Avalanche, what, two days ago? Uh, that's a pretty big thing. I mean, just think about, about the reach that Amazon has. Think about just how much their their money is backed by them. Think about how much it actually pushed things forward. So like if I take a look at Avalanche, that's a that's a pretty big deal. Now will this will it uh, lead to something? Nobody knows. Nobody can really tell you for 100% sure, but I mean that's some enormous news. It's almost like I mean when we had uh, Polygon when they got picked up by the incubator for Disney. There and they were one of mm -hmm. only five companies globally to be to be chosen. I love Polygon. So like with this I'm like this is another big thing. To, to me, it makes me more bullish on, on Avalanche than I was before because everybody talked about what? They talk about Ethereum. They would talk about Polygon. They would talk about Cardano. They would talk about Cosmos. But no one was really, and then Polkadot, of course, right? But no one was really mm -hmm. saying too much about Avalanche. This, I think, changes the whole narrative with Avalanche moving forward. Now, I still, I have some because I'm biased, of course, but every, every layer one I, did, I just talked about, I also own those too because I don't know which one's going to make it. So I diversify. But yeah, I can see, see this doing something big. Yeah, I mean, uh, I fully agree. This is definitely pretty big news. So actually, I didn't know they were the only blockchain to partner officially with, with uh, Amazon, with AWS. That's, pre that's pretty good because I know Solana partnered with Google and Google's partnered right. with some other L1s. But for AWS to choose Avalanche, I can definitely see why. Uh, I also do own Avalanche. I've been staking it for about a year now. I did attend their mm -hmm. conference in Barcelona last year, and that was pretty What'd good. You think? And the yeah, I loved it. I mean, it wasn't as big as Breakpoint, which I also went to in Portugal. Uh, mm -hmm. Breakpoint was, I mean, they're just they're just throwing money everywhere. One of the most lavish <laughs> conferences I've, I've been to, right? Huh. But I think Avalanche. What, what stuck out to me was the number of gaming projects building on Avalanche. And subnets, I saw subnets really as the next catalyst for Avalanche to potentially do well. Uh, and I've mentioned before how we're bullish on the whole narrative of a multi-chain world and right. basically application side chains. And in a way, subnets kind of give you that, right? So how Cosmos has app chains, I feel like with subnets, it's kind of the same concept. So being able to have an L1 that secures other blockchains, I think is very, very bullish. And I think Avalanche is one project for bullish on the long term and it's definitely on a watch list uh i have it our fund has it uh so definitely i think it's big news for the long term and this is yeah a project we do plan to accumulate some more actually yeah this is right, this, this is, this is a long-term play yeah let's check into the audience with some comments here uh okay so some people are actually bearish on avalanche interesting so somebody yeah. says uh avalanche real is companies have products and revenue but crypto projects just mostly hype, all pump and dump, no real substance or product utility. Um, I would disagree with that. Avalanche is vaporware along with Cardano. Now, I, <laughs> Cardano, I think so. I mean, I, Cardano has great tech, but I feel like it's a science project in terms of developer activity and actual usage mm -hmm. compared to other L1, just it's not quite there yet. Um, maybe it takes longer because the, they're doing the whole formal verification. But Avalanche, the reason why I'm bullish on it, besides having good technology and also having a good architecture. Uh, one, one of the best technical white papers of Red. When they launched, uh, I am kind of disappointed I was kind of late to the Avalanche 
train. Uh, mm. But two, the whole subnets and app chains. Three, they're well funded for the next market cycle. So we know they can survive any bear market. And then four, in this market cycle or in the last bull run from last year, they had actual traction in terms of projects building on them, right? So we know we've seen them already court developers and have some applications do well, right? I know when we, we had the whole DeFi 2.0 craze happening with Olympus DAO, uh, mm-hmm. some forks like Time Wonderland had lots of traction. Basically, there were EV, there were Ethereum DApps that were forked over to Avalanche. And that, to me, showed that, okay, they can steal some thunder from Ethereum and Ethereum developers. And now, as they build during this, this bear market, I think next market cycle, they could definitely bounce back. So I don't really see them going anywhere. They built a pretty good ecosystem. Uh, they can, they're basically targeting particular niches from gaming. Um, and I think that's a good narrative for them to focus on because they can outcompete over Ethereum and other L1s in terms of that. Yeah, right, L1s, so... they can, L1s, they can beat them, but the L2s, I mean, if you're, if you're taking a look at like like Polygon and ZK Rose, all those things, like the things that are the, the, the gaming software, or the, the games that are built on Polygon, they can actually compete because they're not so you know, you know dastardly expensive of what it is. Uh, one of yeah. those being, so Fred, I mean, hmm? yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. No, I was gonna say like 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 there's a couple that I know of like like Gensukishi. I've, I've gotten in that project that's built on Polygon. There's a couple of different ones out there. So yeah, I can, but. I mean, if you can get even cheaper than that, that's all people want. They want it fast, they want it cheap, and they want it dependable. So they don't want these chains to just automatically just go down. They don't want them to be centralized or more centralized because that's what caused them to go down when the, they have to reset everything. They want things to be as decentralized as humanly possible. And that way, it won't be so bad. That's one of the things I, I like about Cosmos. I mean, remember, Cosmos, they have Crypto.com and a couple of different chains on it. One of those was also Luna. And when Luna collapsed, mm-hmm. that, that, that didn't affect anything whatsoever for all the other chains because it's essential. It's a layer zero, but it's different in how, how, they, how they say it, but sure. Yeah, I uh, fully agree. So looking at DeFi Lama's data for all these different chains, so obviously Ethereum is doing pretty well as number one. Uh, we have Binance Smart Chain and Tron. Uh, those I don't really like because they're centralized. But Polygon, mm-hmm. Arbitrum, and Avalanche are neck and neck, basically fourth, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Now, the interesting thing with Avalanche, they have 280 protocols on their protocol, basically building on Avalanche. So in a time like this, I think that's still pretty good relative to other L1s, right? We know Solana only has 91, and TVL has been decreasing uh, ever since the Alameda FTX collapsed. But Mm. uh, definitely worth looking into Avalanche for the long term. All right, so... Uh, let's move on to, so basically most people looking at the responses are bullish on Avalanche. Uh, tell us what you think. Uh, we've had lots of people who aren't bullish on Avalanche post in the comments below, but if you are bullish on Avalanche, tell us why uh, down below. All right, so uh, thank you for all that. Let's move on to the next segment. Okay, so now it's time for the AMA. Um, Rob, how much time do we have you for? How, how, how I'm free today, time? man. I, I we did a. I'm not gonna do a video today. I got some other some family things to take care of, so I'm not gonna have to do all the research and the editing and all that. So I got time, and I'd love to answer. I'd love to answer ask, answer some questions. Wax blockchain. Someone's okay. asking about that, and yeah. L1s is stalled. And yeah, sure. All right, awesome. So first question we have. Um, so best time to enter a trading position and how to find it. Oh, that's, that's, all that's you, a good man. question. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not yeah. really a trader, but I, I can kind of help with this. So uh, if I was you and I was looking for a good way to enter a trading position, this is why we designed the platform. So we have the trader grade. I would just come here. So in this case, I have it set to AI. Let me actually reset this. Let me just reset everything. So I would use a trader grade because that gives you the a short-term great to use in terms of out of the thousands of coins out there which ones can you focus on in terms of trading so look at that if we just go back here so oh, i'm I just see. resetting all these filters yeah all right so we have trader grade and i always like to filter for bullish 
Uh, it's kind of obvious. <laughs> you don't want to trade anything <laughs> bearish unless you're trying to short it, maybe, no, which could short, be used sure. for short. Uh -huh. But basically, I'll add trading signal, signal bullish. I would add a uh, minimum volume requirement. So it kind of depends on how much capital you have, but let's make it 5 million or more in terms of 24 hour trading volume. Let's, let's say you want to trade some uh, mid caps, low caps. And this basically gives you a list. Then I zoom out and look at the, at the narrative, right? So we're looking at fetch.ai, AI narrative, liquid staking with Rocket Pool and Lido and staked ETH. Then we have all the rest, right? Uh, and then what I also like to do is I like to add a condition for some tokens that have already began moving. So I want to look at tokens that have already already moved forty five uh, already moved five percent in the last twenty four hours, and this basically gives us a list. And this list now basically becomes the list for us to explore. So Sam, I mean, Gala would have been a good one. Yeah. that just that just pumped in the last hour. Yes, yeah. So I like to look at tokens that have a trader grade over 80. Now, this is a pretty long list relative to having to go through all these different tokens. So I might even add uh, additional filters, right? Show me anything that has moved fast in terms of trader grade, where the trader grade has gone up more than 5% in the last 24 hours, meaning that it's had a, a quick, sharp turn. So now we have a shorter list. We have Sandbox. Anchor, Cardena, Sushi, and Strike. So mm -hmm. we have five tokens, and mm -hmm. now I would look, look at this, right? So let's say we want to look, look at Sandbox. How do we enter this? How do we manage the trading? So um, this is where I would use all the different parts of the trader page. So in this, in this instance, 87% trader grid is up 15% in the last 24 hours, which is good. It's up 40 over 40% over in the last two weeks, which is also good. The trading okay. signal turned bullish on the 12th. So basically yesterday, also good. So all these are additional points of confluence. And then I go to the levels and I try to see how I would manage this trade. So in terms of entering this, it's currently at 57 cents. So first thing I would look for is how do I manage the risk? Right, so if it's at 57 cents, how low can it go? So in this case, we have support at 42 cents as one. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. Because currently it's, it's, it has pumped from like about 38 cents to 56 cents. Hmm. It's a pump. Let's say, yeah, it is. So if we said what, uh, 42 cents, from 57, so I'm just going to do some quick math real quick. Napkin math. It's up 15 cents, right? Um, so if you want a three, a 3x risk to reward ratio, we would want it to go up 45 cents from 57. Mm -hmm. So we're talking basically a, a dollar two cents. The question is, do you think that's possible? Basically, this has to double in price. Mm. So looking at this chart, is that possible? Um, right now, I'm seeing there's resistance at 77 cents. There's some at 91 cents. Then the next would be a dollar 14. So actually, I would say a dollar 14 would be the long-term target for this trade. But you could have some. That kind of depends on how, how people trade. But let's say you you want to just trade slowly or just make some money in this market. So I would enter. At this price, 57 cents, with a target to potentially take some money off gradually at 77 cents, 91 cents, and a dollar 14. And then, um, in terms of stop loss, I would have 42 cents as a stop loss, but I'll probably have something even lower, uh, even higher than that, maybe somewhere somewhere in the, in the middle. But hmm. overall, that's how I would trade and enter and manage the manage this trade by looking at the different levels we have uh, based on the current price. Um, right, because I think you have to know when you plan to get out before you enter any trade. That's pretty cool. Right. Again, what, what are you guys going to mm -hmm. do to uh, improve that? Because I, I know I heard you say that we're going to try to do some reshuffling of that information for that, yes. that graph right there. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. 
Yeah, so currently the plan is to basically take all these levels and make mm -hmm. them available kind of like as the, as numbers. Because I feel like with any token, the way to, to yeah. trade it is you should have three target levels on the way up and three target levels on the way down. Right? So basically three take profits on the way up and three stop yeah. losses on the way down. So as That'd opposed to good. having to yeah. kind of manually find that through this chart, uh, we want to just give you those, those numbers, right? So we'll give you the current price, three take mm -hmm. profits on if, if it goes up, and two stop losses if it goes down, making it easier to trade. And easier not to lose your lose your tail. Yeah. Right. Yep. And yeah. then making that available also via the data API for those who want to build their own trading bots using those those numbers. Yeah, that's pretty good. Look at this one. I like this one. San, this is from DCF. San will never see a new all-time high. Solana, the same thing. EOS 2.0. Oh. <laughs> All right. Remember so EOS? let's actually talk about that. What do you think about that? <laughs> so, I mean, San, well, here's the thing. Like, I mean, the narrative, it's a funny thing, right? We, we talk about narratives. The narrative was, of course, the uh, the metaverse not too long ago, was it not? Especially when, when Facebook rebranded to meta. Everything was metaverse. Yeah. And everything that was that double metaverse went up like a ridiculous amount. Do I think it can it can't reach it? Anything can happen, but uh, it depends on the utility and people are they actually going to use it? We're, are we going to go into the metaverse or is the or the next narrative the next shiny object AI? And that's all we're going to focus on for the next time. And in in the next bull run, I don't think it even matters really the fundamentals. It just means that the next bull run. And we we Ian, you've been through a couple of them now, many actually. You know, people yeah. start throwing money at things and that's, they don't even care about what it is. They just throw it and then off they go. So could it reach it? I think it can still reach it, especially with the, with the, with the, with the metaverse play. Yeah. I mean, um, I think, I don't think Solana is the next EOS. That I'd have to disagree with. No, I'm actually so invested in EOS and actually yeah. made money on it because <laughs> I think I, I saw that 10X, but I was part of the ICO. The ICO was pretty crazy. It was almost like this auction type format. I mean, there really? is a lot of money and basically didn't do anything. Um, but the reason why with EOS is different. EOS, you had somebody who had a history of kind of abandoning projects, right? And the founder of CEO, Dan Larimer, right? He did BitShares. Mm -hmm. He did oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. EOS. And he did, did some other projects, I forget, that he, I think, uh, SteamShare or SteamIt. Steam, SteamIt. I remember Steam, that one, right? yeah. So he, he had a track record of kind of building, then moving on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So... With Solana, the found the team and founders don't really have that track record, right? right. Uh, and then I think the fact that despite them crashing a lot, they still have a thriving developer ecosystem, and they're well funded for the next market cycle. Um, I don't really see that going away. Uh, as someone who's been to their conference in Portugal, I saw what was there. I'll be shocked that they're not around the next market cycle. In terms of yeah. getting into a new all-time high, don't forget Solana is down was down 95 percent. That's fine because back in 2018, Ethereum went down 95 percent, <clears throat> and Ethereum yeah. still had a new all-time high in the new market cycle because Ethereum still right. had fundamentals there, had developer activity and a thriving developer ecosystem. So if anything, Solana is doing what Ethereum did back in 2018, 2019, and 2020. So it's I think with everything available, they can bounce back. Yeah, there's 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 one caveat. So like we talk about the the developers, the ecosystem. I know some devs have jumped ship because I mean they have that ability, right? But I do mm -hmm. think like I've been talking to a couple of different projects, and all they and I ask them, I go, how is it? How are you guys doing in, in, in this bear market? Most of them say the same thing. It's awesome. It's awesome because I don't have to deal with the noise. I can get stuff done. We can actually move forward. We already funded ourselves, so all our competition is dying. That's exact. And that's and I'm like, that's pretty much what's going to be. So if the, the projects that just make it to this crappy bear market are going to crush it in the bull market. And if Solana, if they stayed well-funded, then they should be just fine. And, and that, I, I think, is the big thing. And these exchanges that keep just dropping off the face of the earth, uh, all you got to do is make it through. If Binance can make it through, they're already powerhouse. But if Coinbase makes it through, next powerhouse, right? Yep. That's all yep. I said. So comment here from DCF. No fraud SBF to pump it with your dollars and BTC. No new VCs to pump it. Chamath and David's uh, sacks sold the top on your grandma and Solana <laughs> still inflating. Sure, it will 10x, but don't expect 750. It's delusional. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone's expecting 750x returns. No. But I, I do think of 
five to ten x as possible, kind of like what Ethereum did. Or, but I, I do see Solana hitting a new all time high within two to four years, right? Assuming obviously crypto bounces back in that cycle. But I think I would not be shocked if Solana hit a new all time high in the future. Yeah. So, all right. So, but, Ian, um, do, you think, do you think that we can do a, another hundred x in, in a different uh, token that's out there, or you think those days are long gone? No, oh, those days are always there. Yeah. But I think you have to catch them in a bear market. So the, the yes. best example I always give people is Polygon, right? But which did a hundred x. But I'll show you why, right? Once you understand how this works, you can do this with other tokens. Yeah. So we can just go to the historical price for Polygon right. uh, when it launched. Now, I see a price was. 0. 0.0007. I'm not yeah. sorry, the, the seed stage price. Then there was a Binance launchpad, but this is after it's already trading on exchanges. It was basically half a penny. Half a penny. Yeah. yeah. For basically about a year and a half, you could have accumulated Polygon. Oh, those were the days. Now, the fundamentals, even back then, were good. It has great technology. And the reason mm -hmm. why we were bullish on it is we have blockchain engineers that we basically give products to do code, re code reviews on. And most times they just do a review and kind of move on to the next project. But we discovered yeah. in the bear market, two of our developers were actually building their own projects on the side as a hobby on Polygon, ah. on Matic at the time. Oh, on Matic, and that told us, okay. okay. That told us, oh, developers are seeing lots of value in this. So now, surprisingly, I was kind of scared to accumulate during the bear market. So I bought in basically at under three cents once it began to kind of slowly pump back in like early 2021. And That's from good. that time, yeah. it went all the way to $2.92, uh, almost $3. Yeah, and then... Basically, over 100x return, over, four, over 400x return, same thing with Helium Network. But it, why I like this is this was a project that was deeply undervalued, already trading on exchanges. You didn't have to be a VC to get in, to buy the dip. You had to just be there in the market, not care about the macro that we're in a bear market. And just be ready yeah. to deep value invest. <clears throat> so same thing can be done with other L1s. So I do think you can find 100x returns available. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I were, if I were to do that, uh, I would come here on Tokyo Metrics, look at the investor grade, and look at projects that have an FTV of, let's say, less than or equal to 200 million. And basically, I'll just kind of go down this watch list. So we've covered Scylla Network before. Uh, we think it's undervalued. Uh, what is it called? Obviously, Scylla Network? Scylla Network. I can pull that up. Uh, okay. We have Cartesian Anchor. We have uh, Harmony. Harmony is one I actually covered before as the potential 100x. Really? Um, yeah. So I'll kind of tell you okay. why. Although, I mean, 100x. Oh, okay. Why not? Uh, investments are always risky. That's why they end up doing 100x. It's, you're basically going for the home run. You can strike out. You should expect to strike out most of the time. The way I view this is basically you're placing a bet. If you find 10 coins with potential to do 100x, expect maybe one of them to actually do the 100x or more. Maybe, maybe two. Because one or two will carry the whole portfolio. So why That's we it, like this? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Still a network. Um, we should show you here. Good, good fundamentals, uh, greatly undervalued with good technology. So you can, you can drill down here and, and see all the different sub, sub grades as to why this is good. Lots of developer activity, uh, has pretty good security and audits. Uh, but why I also like it is we've talked about the multi-chain narrative being a big narrative for the next market cycle. If we look at all these other L1s and L0s, right? So from Celestia to layer zero, to Avalanche subnets, to Polkadot, to Cosmos. This is basically a protocol that connects mm. all of those together, right? So, so every dApp, every asset, every user is connecting all these blockchains and dApps together, right? They, they work with Arbitron, Ethereum, Polygon, and Optimism. Mm. So I feel, I feel like this fits that narrative, which I think is going to be huge for the next market cycle. Yeah. So this, plus it being undervalued, 
uh, worth looking into and putting on a watch list and taking maybe a bet on this. Um, then the other one was Harmony. This okay. is basically an L1 with less than 200 million FTV with hmm. most, of, most of the tokens already liquid. So meaning that over 90% of the tokens are already out there. Wow. Uh, it has good fundamentals, very undervalued. Uh, technology grade is, is okay. But if we compare this to, uh, let me actually go to CoinGecko, to the, the whole sector, right? So we go to smart contract platforms. Yeah. And we compare all, all the platforms based on FTV. It's basically an Ethereum EVM chain at under $200 mm -hmm. million. Dollars. So we have Polygon at $9 billion, Solana at $9, 9 billion. billion. Yeah. Um, Ethereum Classic for four point four billion. Why is that even around? Sorry, if you're if you want Ethereum yeah, Classic, I just don't, I don't get know. it. <laughs> right, Cardano one billion. So I think yeah. Harmony can do it a ten x potentially. But if you also look, look look at their ecosystem, they had some traction uh, last cycle, right? Basically with De DeFi Kingdom, which was a project. Yeah. What I like to do is find products that are well capitalized basically well-funded to survive any bear market um, and have shown some initial traction with developers building on their protocol. So the, the fact that DeFi Kingdom launched on, on Harmony and had some traction yeah. shows me that next market cycle, they could have even more developers uh, building on their protocol. While the on-chain activity is not that great currently versus other L1s, I think in terms of the risk to reward for the value, their FTV, versus to where they can go, versus to showing that they have funding and they have a good team, uh, I think definitely worth looking into because uh, if I just zoom out here, let's actually look at market cap. So they had a project, DeFi Kingdom at one point had over a billion dollar market cap Jim. on Harmony, right? So to me, that's, that, that's they had a home run. They didn't have several home runs like Ethereum on, and other projects, but they're showing one project can build on their protocol and actually thrive or have some traction. That'll be a good marketing piece for developers in the future who want to potentially build in, in Harmony. So that's that's also on the list. So if, if I had to pick some projects to add on the watch list for 100X, Harmony could be the, the next polygon potentially based on the FDV and having a huge total addressable market. Um, and then mm -hmm. still a network. So that's kind of how I would play that. Yeah, what's uh, the deal with Harmony? Why aren't people why aren't people building on it yet? That's the question. Yeah, that is the question, right? I think uh, it is a crowded market in terms of uh, Ethereum mm -hmm. projects, um, but I think that's where we have to do kind of further research into their ecosystem, the community, and yeah. get feedback from developers in terms of what's happening. Uh, DCF says Harmony as a blockchain is really nice to use. I've used it in the past. Solid EVM chain. All right. it's, uh, it's, it's different. It's like that. It's like that uh, restaurant that opens up down the street from you. That's you, you. go to it once, and you're like, "This is awesome. This is great food." I don't know why there's nobody here. And then you come back the next week, nobody's there. Just you and your wife, yeah. right? Like, this is great. Yeah. Why isn't anybody here? <laughs> and then you try to go back a month later, it's closed down. Like, what the hell happened? So maybe yeah. that's that's just one of those issues where, it, I mean, businesses yeah. just don't make it sometimes. I don't know why. I mean, maybe to play devil's advocate, I would say. Maybe the L2 narrative with Ethereum could also be, obviously is competition with Arbitrum optimism. Um, been, if we go back to uh, DeFi Llama, right? And, and Polygon, those taking off have done a lot better and there isn't much activity now. So the question is, is this a dead chain? I think it was pretty low in uh, TVL. You know, we should... You know what we should yeah. do? Well, let's just ask Chad GPT. Is Harmony a, <laughs> is Harmony a dead chain? <laughs> uh, actually, speaking of that, so we, we have actually been working with Chad GPT-3 for over, actually, I'm sorry, GPT-3 itself for over, over a year. We do oh, have nice. our automated reports, which are actually powered by GPT-3. And oh, in the future, we cool. do want to kind of build a chatbot powered by Chad G G G GPT-3 with our own data. That's good. Basically, taking our data API and letting people kind of, kind of like this AMA talk to it and 
and kind of ask it any crypto question. But obviously, we are very bullish on the future of AI. Okay, uh, Fly75 says, uh, Jewel left Harmony for Clayton after the hack. Okay, yeah, that is actually a good point to mention. Yeah, they did have the Harmony Bridge hack. So I think that it kind of scares, scares some people. But to me, I wouldn't let that deter me. I would still do my own research because sometimes that's the best time to, to buy, right? Because when people sell and the price crashes, you want to buy when people are forced sellers. You get the best discount. Yeah. But obviously, it's also more risky. And, and you know what? Like I, I was talking to a friend uh, yesterday, Jerry Hall. And we were talking, he's got a YouTube channel in Costa Rica. And we were talking about how it's a good thing that we're around now. So we can tell people like, as far as their crypto, if they want to store it, they should put in a cold storage. We give them three reasons, which is Celsius, Voyager, and FCX. And I said, no one's going to forget, right, Jerry? He's like, no, no, you don't understand, Rob. He goes, people don't, they won't remember. Just like how with this Harmony hack, at some point, people aren't going to remember. And of course, with all the people that got into, myself included, Celsius, Voyager, and FTX, we forgot the lessons of the past, which was that uh, uh, we just had a big hack, uh, Mount Gox from 2014. All the people, and I know oh, yeah. when you were coming up, they all told you the same thing, didn't they? Don't leave your, your stuff yeah. on exchanges. There's there because a hack coming. We're like, whatever, old timer. We, we know what's, what's happening. And then we got this happened to centralized exchanges. Moving forward with Harmony, they're not going to remember a hack. They're just going to know number goes up. And the next people that think about cold storage in the next bull run, they're the ones that are going to get wiped out too. Thankfully, we have the old guard here, me and you, Ian, to help remind them. And then people watching the show right now. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, I think every market is like if people kind of forget uh, past events and then sometimes they typically end up re repeating themselves. Uh, it's definitely it's unfortunate awful. what happened with uh, Celsius and everything. It is. It's awful. The 100 million Harmony Bridge hack. That was a lot. That was a pretty gigantic hack. Yeah. Yeah, pretty huge hack. All right. So um, with that being said, I think let's kind of begin to wrap things up. Let's yeah. uh, go back to just... Uh, cover again the announcements we had. So as mentioned, if you want to potentially win uh, some prizes for walking, I highly encourage you to go to danteacherscrypto.com slash sweatcoin dash giveaway. Uh, as Dan covered, uh, let me actually get out of this. These are the prizes available. You can win sweatcoins, nano ledger, and also a lifetime token metrics membership. So if you're already walking or if you aren't walking or have health as a big New Year's resolution, highly encourage you to go check that out. Ooh, Damon. Okay. Uh, Kava Kava bar bars. Hey, Damon. <laughs> What's going on, Damon? <laughs> Kava bars. We'll do the best in 2023. Uh, and then uh, we also mentioned the launch of our data API. If you want to leverage our data, uh, all these different data points to build your own trading bots or to do whatever you want with it, uh, right now, just go to token, just go to tokenmetrics, uh, go to products, data API, and then click register for the free beta. Uh, basically, right now, you can leverage our data points and endpoints for free. Uh, we're, we're trying to learn more how people will leverage this data and AI that we have. And then we're targeting probably an official launch, um, probably sometime in Q2. So definitely tell us what you think. All right. With that being said, Rob, any last words to our crypto family? Just be patient. Uh, we got a long way to go, but uh, the ones that stick around are usually the winners. Yeah, uh, well said. Yeah, uh, it's a long-term game. Stay in the game. Um, I would say my my words of wisdom, don't focus so much on the macro. Otherwise, you might miss some of the alpha, even in a bear market. Because bear markets typically are the best time to find great projects, cheap at a discount, deep value investing for the long term. So that being said, hope, hope uh, everybody has a good week. And a uh, happy new year. Take care, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. How are you?